Hello world, Lisa Fredrickson, your friend and computer science professor with another short screencast to help you learn CSS Flexbox, as well as to make a Flexbox of images for your final project in my class, because that's a very common way to use Flexbox, to have images flexibly position themselves and align themselves in a box. So I'm here at w3schools.com and reading about Flexbox, and I love these little try it yourself buttons because they put the code on the left and then they give you the run button and the results on the right. It's a very quick way to play with code and drill down into that one topic. But the thing with Flexbox that we must know is that it's a one dimensional box. It's not a table grid that's two dimensions. That's for grid. A box is just a row of items, or it can be a column of items, but one dimension that you want to flexibly position inside the box. With both Flexbox and Grid, you have to have a container that you set to make this all happen. So in the style sheet, they have a class with the period, a flex container that they have set to display, colon flex. That's where it all starts. And in the HTML, it's just a div, a division. So this big blue box is the division, is the div, that's class flex container. And then we look up here in our CSS and we see that that class has a display of flex. That's what makes the magic happen for all the items inside the container. It's not wrapping. That's a default. And its background color is this Dodger blue. So that blue color is the flex container, just a div. And then every item inside the div is called a flex item. And what do we have in our flex box now? Just these non-descriptive div elements that are numbered one through eight so that you can clearly see them over here on the right. I'm gonna put in a nine just for kicks and grins to show you some of the things that you can do to play with your code at 23schools.com and then run. And then we see number nines over here. Let's see what styles we have put on our items inside the flex box. And to find that, we go up to this selector, and it's a little odd. All this means is if you're a div and you're a direct descendant of the flex container class, so that would be all these divs that are inside this flex container class. Your background color is this light gray color. You have a particular width, a particular margin. You're centered. The text one, two, three is centered inside that little box. The height they've got fixed and the font size they've got fixed. And so I can just prove that I'm talking to each one of those little containers by doing something silly like this. Let's make the width 20 pixel and run it and see what that does. So that shows us that our div is still a block container, a block element that goes the entire width of the screen. But now we have set all of our items inside that flex box to be 20 pixels wide. Now I'm not gonna go through all the different properties of the flex box itself or the items inside it because there are so many, but I'd rather have you just get the big concept that Flexbox requires a container and it has items that flexibly align themselves inside the container. Also the fact that Flexbox is one direction. So sometimes we'll use a flex box inside a bigger grid and use the two together. W3 Schools is excellent for drilling down into these little examples with these try it yourself buttons. Another excellent way to give yourself an idea of what Flexbox can do is to play the flexboxfroggy.com game. And it's just a game, so it doesn't show you all the code like W3 Schools, so that in and of itself can be confusing. But what Flexbox Froggy does do is expose you to all the different Flexbox properties in CSS, which is kind of neat. So the whole goal of the game is to get the frog positioned on the lily pad. And we're in this big pond, which has got this blue background. So assuming that the pond has a display flex property, what would you add as a declaration to move the content, the frog, to the lily pad, which is on the right-hand side? And the instructions sort of tell you what they want you to learn about. They want you to learn about the justify content property. If I use the justify content property and I'm in a flexible box and I use flex end, look at here, the frog content flexes to the end of the box. And I can do next and go to the next level two. And in this case, the pond has the content or two frogs. The pond is displaying in flex. And for that overall pond, 
I want to justify content this time. I want the frogs to move into the center, and they do. And you keep moving through these exercises with the Flex container itself. Now that we know that Flexbox is a one-dimensional box that allows us to flexibly organize content and arrange content inside the box, let's get to how you're going to apply that in your final project. And by the way, there is a hands-on exercise in Chapter 8 in your book on how to put images in a flex box, which is what I'm requiring on the final project. But I want to show you how I'm doing it because you're very likely going to pull your images off your phone or off of different sources, and they're not going to work as neatly as the example in the book. So for example, these six images, Utah 0 through Utah 5, are images I pulled off my phone, and I want to use them in a flexible box on a web page. If I look at how large they are, I can see that they're all pretty large. And if I open them up and just go through them, they seem like they'd be fine images for a web page. But when I put those images on a web page and I put them on a web page called flexbox.html, that is one folder level up. Here it is, flexbox.html. I'm going to show you this in my editor. I've had to go into my originals folder and then specify my file name because my images are not in the same folder as the flexbox.html. They're one folder level deeper. I want to show you how this looks on a web page. So let me run and launch this in Chrome, and you're going to get something like this. And what is this? Well, this is the upper edge of the sky for my first image. So I can see that when I put these images into a web page right off my phone, they are way too big. This is not going to work. So some of you might be tempted to put in height and width attributes like this. And if you just put in one measurement, then the other measurement will automatically resize to be proportional. So you might be tempted to do something like this for 200 pixels. Let me refresh my page. And all at once, that looks a whole lot better. But the problem with this, people, is that now you're sending these very large images to the browser. They're going to load slowly. You're not using all of that quality. It's really a waste of resources. So what you want to do instead is I've copied those images, all the originals. And I put them in this small folder. And you can see that the sizes on them are a whole lot smaller except for this Utah one picture. I want to show you how I would encourage you to resize your images for the web before you stick them in the web because we do not want to fix them and force them to be smaller with height and width attributes. I don't want you to use height and width attributes in your HTML on your image tag at all. And I'll show you how to flexibly style this with CSS here in a minute. So we're back here in the small folder and I've got the one image that's still its original size that I want to resize. So what you can do, and again, I'm not teaching you graphic design skills here. I'm just showing you how to make this palatable for our final project. In the real world, you're going to be working with a professional graphic designer that can help you with the quality of your photos, can help you with colors, fonts, white space, all of the things that go into making a desirable web page. So don't think that I'm trying to teach professional web design with this little example. I'm just showing you how to make your images a whole lot smaller and stay in proportion. And that is to right click the image, go to open with, and if you're on a Windows machine, you've got paint. If you're on a Mac machine, you've got an equivalent free paint product. And here's that huge image in Paint. Paint has a resize feature where you can resize it to a percentage of its former self. And so I'm going to try 25%. It automatically keeps the image in proportion. I'm going to click OK. And that's still not quite small enough, so I'll resize it again to 50% of what it used to be. Click OK. And then I can read in the bottom in the status bar about 500 pixels wide, which is about what I want it to be. And it's remained in proportion because I am not fixing the height and fixing the width pixels. I'm allowing the image to be automatically resized. So I'm going to file, save that. And now in my small folder, I've got very small image sizes that I can put on my web page. So let's go back to our web page and let's put our large reference to our images in comments, and let's uncomment the reference to the small images. And of course, I'd want to add the alt 
so that screen readers can read these, or if any image broke, I'd get the text, or also for SEO purposes, so that these images get cataloged and referenced by search engines. But I'm going to skip that for now because I'm just trying to show how the images, the smaller images in the small folder, are going to look on the web page. Let's run and let's launch in Chrome. So now we have images of a reasonable size and shape that we can put in a Flexbox. Now one other thing I'm going to want to see you do before we get to Flexbox is in your style sheet, and I'm going to cheat and use an embedded style sheet here just so we can see all the code on the screen at the same time, is to have a rule like this. For your image elements, I want you to use a max width rule of 100%. And before I save this, let's go back to the web page and look and see how these images size or resize as I change the size of the browser. And they really don't. Images, as we know, are, are inline elements. So if two or more will fit on a line, they will stack up on a line. But they are in no way flexible. So as soon as I change my browser viewport to be smaller than can show more than one image on a line, they start moving to different lines. And at some point, the image gets cut off because it's not flexible at all. But with this rule in the style sheet, now I'm going to go ahead and save this work. With this one rule in the style sheet, I'm telling the image your maximum width is 100%. I don't ever want you to get bigger than 100%. But with that one little symbol, that percent sign, that has now made the image flexible. And let's see the difference here. At first, it doesn't look like there's a difference. They seem to be lining up on the same line or wrapping in the same way. But watch what happens when I get my screen really small. So on a small phone, I'm going to be able to see the entire image. It's not going to get cut off on the right as it would if I did not have that rule in my style sheet. However, not only do I want flexible images, I want them all on the same row. That's where Flexbox comes in. So the, I'm going to delete this so I have more room on my screen. You need to have a flex container to flex the items inside the container. So let's do that. Let's create a div, and I'm going to ID it as my image box and that div stops right there and then up in my style sheet I'm going to style to the image box I'm going to display flex and see what that does and this is a very important technique to try one thing at a time and then go over to your web page and reload and now I've got a flexible box and it's put all of those images in that box but of course I don't want my images cut off on the right hand side and the way the example in the book handles that is to use these precisely sized images with height and width attributes that are exactly the same in the exercise 8.1. And that's okay, but you might not have images that are perfectly sized. And you just got done hearing me say, I don't want you to put height and width attributes in your HTML because that forever fixes the size of that image. We want flexible images with CSS. So how do we do that? So the problem is horizontal overflow on a flex box. And thanks to Professor Google and Stack Overflow and an article that discusses this specific problem, I found this rule. Min width on the flex child will solve the horizontal overflow problem. So let's put that rule into our images inside the image box save and see what happens on our web page. Okay, we have no more horizontal overflow. We do have a proportion problem, however, so let's fix that. And I'm going to put a comment here because that is such a non-obvious rule, fixes horizontal overflow, so I don't forget the next time I need such a thing. I'm going to also add height and width of 100% to the images inside the image box. Let's see what that does. Okay, now all of our images are in the flex box and they're proportional and they flex beautifully and they're not any bigger or any smaller than their actual size. Now, if I would rather have these aligned to the bottom instead of to the top, I could go up to my container, my flex box container, and say align items baseline and that will put the items inside the flex box along the bottom. Save, refresh, and there we go. Now I've got flexible items in a flex box. 
no matter what size my screen is, I'm going to get all six images in proportion, flexibly showing on my device. And that's what I want you to do for your final as well. Now you can see that anytime you have images of the same size, Flexbox works best. So starting with a set of small images that are the same size for your Flexbox on your final will probably give you the best results. Thank you.